from St. Louis Public Radio. This is St. Louis on the Air. When, when you get infected, you have a high level of antibodies in your uh, blood very early after infection, but, but the cells that produce these antibodies, they die. And then there's another kind of cells that are specialized for to be long-lived, to live for basically for the rest of our lives. And those cells only survive in the bone marrow. So when we looked at their bone marrow, we actually found these cells that are actually generating, producing these antibodies that are specific only for the virus. I'm Sarah Fenske. A new study from Washington University upends the conventional wisdom about antibodies from COVID-19 infections. The study suggests that if you've had even a mild case of COVID, you're likely to enjoy a robust immune response for a very, very long time. And that is both good news and perhaps surprising news. The study made a huge splash this week, and joining us today to explain more is its senior author, Ali el He is an associate professor of pathology and immunology, of medicine, and of molecular microbiology at Washington University. So, Ali, welcome. Oh, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So your study finds that people who've had COVID-19 will probably have antibodies for a lifetime. How do you know that? Um, okay, I guess we have to start with um, how our immune system works. And this is a, in a very, very simple terms. We can actually, when we get infected or vaccinated with, with any virus or any, any vaccine, like the flu vaccine, what happens is we form two lines of defense. The first line are these antibodies that are formed in our, and we, we can see it circulating in our blood, mm -hmm. but also the second line of defense are memory cells. So um, what we wanted to do is we wanted to check in people who experience mild infection with SARS-CoV-2 and basically very early in the pandemic, we are talking about March or April last year. Hmm. We wanted to see if they can uh, they actually have formed these two lines of defense. The first thing is the antibodies and the memory cells. And it's a very, it's a very important for, for us to make sure that those who are infected have some immunity against the virus because that g guides us that vaccines also can do the same. Mm -hmm. So we started with, with this question and we followed up with those individuals for seven and up to eight months and then after that up to 11 months after infection. And the, we got the good news that people actually maintain these antibodies in their serum, in their blood. So that is good. Um, but it, it seems to kind of fly in the face of what we have maybe read elsewhere in the media, which was this idea that antibodies waned quickly after infection, that within just a couple months they were gone. Was, was that incorrect? Exactly. This is why we actually got first in, uh, involved and first really in, uh, interested in addressing this question because of all these uh, reports that came out in, uh, in, in September and in October last year when we heard about how the antibodies are crashing in the blood of people who survived the infection. And but then actually when we started looking, this is actually not unexpected. When, when you get infected, you have a high level of antibodies in your uh, blood very early after infection, but very, the, but the cells that produce these antibodies, they die, mm -hmm. very, they, they would die. And then w there's another kind, different kind of cells that are specialized for, to be long lived, to live for basically for the life of, uh, for our, for the rest of our lives. And those cells only survive in the bone marrow. It's a very specialized and very fascinating kind of cells. So what we wanted to do is, instead of just looking in blood, is to actually ask our generous volunteers that came to our shoe, can you please give us a sample from your blood, from your blood and your bone marrow? Bone marrow and samples. I mean, those are that's yeah. a big deal to take those from people. Absolutely. Uh, and it, and I, I have to stress, this is wonderful, wonderful uh, and generous, uh, uh, very generous from our uh, participant to be agreed to give us these uh, precious samples and we always are very grateful for them. So when we looked at their bone marrow, we actually found these cells that are actually generating, producing these antibodies that are specific only for the virus. And we, when we looked at people that did not, got, did not get in the infection, they didn't have any positive test for uh, SARS-CoV-2, 
they did not have these cells in their bone marrow. So we know that these were specific to the virus. And this is really good news for, uh, for what it means to have a durable immune response. So these earlier studies that they made some major headlines suggesting antibodies wane, you're saying that's absolutely to be expected. The real question is what was in the bone marrow. And it sounds like you got the best possible answer there. What's in the bone marrow is, is very good news. Absolutely. And, and it's, it's about the how, how long you can you should track the, the patients or the people who are recovered from the infection. If you only look at them in the first three to four months, so you're just looking at the time when they reached their peak levels and then they started to decrease. And this is when you, if you didn't follow them long enough, you start to panic. But actually, if we followed our patients for 11 months, so we got the full picture, and then we added to that the bone marrow part to actually confirm that these cells were indeed generated in their bone marrow, so they are good. However, I want to make sure that this uh, there's some sort of misconception that I have to clarify. Sure. So when people when people see or can can use some, any of these commercial kits, um, um, and they see that they have some antibodies, and these commercial kits to measure antibodies or to look at antibodies, they can give you a positive or negative result because this is what these kits are designed for. Um, so that doesn't mean by any way that you are protected. You can have you can have some antibodies, but it doesn't mean that you have enough of them to be actually form this first line of defense that you are protected. And this is especially true if you are faced with a virus that changed a little bit from the one that circulated early in the pandemic. So having an antibody doesn't mean or doesn't is not equal for being protected. And this is something that I've seen a lot of people uh, saying that I got the infection, why should I care about vaccination? It's for this reason, for actually the other reason is not everyone that got the infection is the same. So, so many people would, for many reasons, would not produce a very robust immune response or against the infection for for, re- for reason related to other medications they are taking, or reason related to their immune health status or other diseases that they have. So we cannot really just do a blanket that everyone got the infection has these level or these high levels of antibodies. So still vaccination is very important. So I, I appreciate very... you clarifying that. Yeah. And so you're saying if somebody, um, you know, has a positive COVID-19 test, that doesn't necessarily mean that they've had the antibody production that they need. If they have actually been ill with COVID-19, I know Senator Rand Paul, he's an example of this, where he says, I had COVID-19. I know that I had it because I was sick with this. Can they count on having antibodies? They they would, well, they definitely could have an immune response and it could be a successful immune response that managed to give them that high durable antibodies. Again, it doesn't mean they are protected. And protection here could be protection from, you could be protected from severe disease if you have these low levels of antibodies. And that's fine if you are talking about yourself, but you could also get a mild infection, but you can transmit the virus to others around you hmm. who, who, who don't have this uh, level of protection. And you could be in a status that could actually lead for them to, uh, to have um, a severe infection. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an important point that really vaccination is still, and it's still important, even if you had the infection. And actually, it's, it's even better for you if you actually get the vaccine, because the infection gave you beautiful memory cells that are ready to take off once they get uh, the vaccination. So you actually get extra insurance, you get higher level of antibodies. And those antibodies not only could protect you from the circulating strains of the virus that we have seen, but only with these emerging variants that we have been hearing about in the last six months, especially the few of them are really uh, are, are, are causing concern. So for those of us who are getting all of our antibodies from the vaccine, we have no belief that we ever had COVID-19. Do we know yet if that is going to give us the same level or the same long lastingness of protection that you're seeing in these people whose bone marrow you tested? This is an excellent question. We have, we are actually, the studies are ongoing. Uh, we have, we have studies ongoing at WashU to actually try to address that exact question. People who got the, the two doses of the vaccine, I'm talking mainly about the mRNA-based vaccines. These are the ones that were mostly available, but we are actually studying other vaccines as well. So are they actually producing uh, those kind of successful immune response and can they produce a durable antibody response? 
and memory cells uh, that are similar to those that, uh, that we detected after infection. Right now, we started with our studies in December. Uh, so the six month time point is coming very close and we are actually looking in blood and we are looking in bone marrow in those participants. And again, we, are, we thank them dearly. And, uh, and again, we hopefully will be able to report these data soon. But I can tell you that the, in, the initial look at the data are very encouraging. Okay. So it feels like it's too soon to say for vaccinated people yet. But this initial, um, what you know based on this study so far, it seems like COVID-19 infections work like other acute viral infections. We can count on antibodies protecting us going forward again if things continue to develop the way they're looking like they're developing. Absolutely. And especially if uh, if the virus doesn't change significantly from from the, the same virus that we use to make the vaccine, then we are we will be in good shape. So we actually got a question by email. Uh, Madonna writes from Crestwood. She says, if people enjoy a lifetime immunity from COVID, please explain the breakthrough infections by vaccinated and or previously infected people. I know you mentioned this could happen. How can that happen? That's a very important question. We actually have an, another study also at WashU where we are looking specifically at this. People who have been fully vaccinated uh, and they come reporting with a positive test, positive PCR test, so we know that they are definitely infected. Uh, we actually sequence the virus and for the most part we see that the virus unfortunately is one of those emerging variants. So there are two or actually there are multiple scenarios that could lead to this. The, the first one is we are, we are not everyone vaccinated, and this is unfortunate, we are not all the same. Mm -hmm. So everyone, when we get vaccinated, some people have a really strong response, some people have okay response, some people have lower response. Again, for the reasons I mentioned earlier, that you could, have, you could be taking other medications, you could be having other health conditions that interfere with a strong uh, immune response. So now you, you have a sub or not a great immune response to vaccination and you get infected with one of those variants that are now starting to increase in circulation and so that that could lead to what we call a breakthrough Okay. So, Ali, this has been so helpful, everything you've explained for us today. I want to ask you um, one other question not so directly related to the science, and this is the fact that your study absolutely blew up. I saw it just about everywhere uh, this week in the media. From the New York Times on down, you were linked on the Drudge Report. Have you done a lot of interviews this week? I have. Yes, I did. Exactly. It has been... It has been a week to remember for sure. Uh, it, it's definitely uh, it has been busy, but I'm I'm actually very excited and I'm very grateful because I think this is a, I get a lot of questions by email and and sometimes uh, I feel it's very hard to actually address it individually. So a platform like yours is something that I appreciate that I can use to actually try to address as many questions as possible. Well, we really appreciate you making the time. And I have to ask, you were very careful to point out, um, even before we could ask you about it, that you really think it's important for people to get vaccinated. It sounds like you're a little bit worried. People may try to twist this and you're trying to head that off. Is, is that a fair reading? That's absolutely correct. I, because, of the, because of the many, many emails I got and many questions I, get, I got about this point, again, it's, it's if, because of the variants, because of these viruses that, again, they are still of some of them very few of them of, of real concern but we are seeing this we are really seeing breakthroughs uh, so it's very important that we uh, we actually uh, get the vaccine and the, the earlier the very very the data published so far show that the vaccine produce a beautiful response in those who have been infected before and it doesn't interfere at all with the natural immune response that they mounted against the virus because that response already concluded and helped them to actually control the virus in the first place and give them a beautiful memory cells that it's just ready to, to ready to be engaged and vaccination is the best way to engage them. Well, Ali Elabadi, I want to thank you so much for joining us today and just explaining this work so well. It, it was my pleasure and thank you for having me. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. If you learned something new from today's episode, consider leaving us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the easiest way to help people discover our show. We appreciate it. Thank you. 
St. Louis Public Radio is a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Support comes from Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to sustainable and sound conservation of the state's forests, which support more than 41,000 Missouri jobs, resulting in a $10 billion industry. Choosewood.com.